Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to another video. Today I am discussing my top 12 books for the first half of 2022. Also, if you hear noise in the background, my dad's busy making food and um, I'll, I'll invite you over for dinner, something like that. <laughs> okay. If you are excited for this video, please like, comment which books you read in the first half of 2022 that you really enjoyed. And without any further ado, let's just jump right into the video. First off, we have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, and basically this is a story about stories. We follow our main character, Zachary Rawlings, and he stumbles upon a book that contains his life, or the early stages of his life, and he starts to investigate what is happening and why he is included in this book. And he stumbles upon a secret society, which leads to a whole unraveling of a huge underground library and a lot of secrets and a lot of mischievous stuff happening stuff that i still can't really recollect it's been 10 months since i read this book so it was a bit jarring for me in the beginning and i'm still trying to wrap my brain around it but it is a really good book if you like erin morgenstern's writing i would definitely suggest this book if this is your first time reading erin morgenstern i would suggest reading her the night circus first before you delve into this book because the night circus introduces you to her writing style and this just takes it one step further and it is it's good. It is very good. Then the second book nobody will be surprised about if you have been on this channel for a while and it is Bitten by Kelly Armstrong. In this book we follow the only female werewolf in the world, Elena Michaels, and she is trying to distance herself from the pack because she doesn't want to be part of that world. This is never what she signed up for. She has a werewolf lover who betrayed her. She doesn't want anything to do with the pack. She just wants to live her life as normal as possible. But unfortunately, a spate of killings start up and she, being the person who actually investigates the mutts or the, the werewolves who are not part of the pack, she is actually asked to come into Stonehaven and help the pack investigate these deaths. She's kind of iffy about this because she doesn't really want to until they kill off two of her pack members. Now it's personal and now she's seeking revenge. This is a nail-biting experience. This is an amazing read. I've said this before and I'll say it again, if you like the story Supernatural or the series Supernatural, you will definitely enjoy this book. Pudding! The next book is Empire of Storms by Sarah J Moss and this is the sixth book in the Throne of Glass series. So naturally because it's the sixth book I can't tell you a lot about it but what I can tell you about the series is we follow our most world famous, obviously in this world, uh, assassin Selena Sardothian and she is unbeatable in any way shape or form she can kill anything she can just look at you and you might just die there's a series of things that are happening in her life that reveals who she actually is and why she's so important to the story this I'm selling it very nicely shut up and take my money but for those of you who are familiar with the story you would know that the ending of this book was just if you are one of those readers who did the tandem read between empire of storms and tower of dawn you wouldn't be as how can i say on the edge to read through tower of dawn but if you are like me who read classically chronologically and you read empire of storms now you're stuck with tower of dawn and you don't know what's going to happen in the last book yeah it's it's this ending was mind-blowing and the more you read the series the more you fall in love with the characters you fall in love with the way sarah j moss actually writes i read the court of thorns and roses series before i read throne of glass and then when i delved into throne of glass and i finished it i can tell you that this is by far my favorite series of sarah j moss so far the next book is the invisible life of Addie larue by v e schwab and here we follow a girl set in i think it's I should have looked this up, but it's the early France years, before the French Revolution. And she doesn't want to be married off to someone. She wants to enjoy her life. And she's asking her parents, please don't let me marry this man. And her parents are like, you'll enjoy it. You'll learn to love him. Don't worry. Because she is living in this quaint little French town cottage thing, she befriends this neighborhood. I would say, I would call her a witch. Or she's just a very strange kind of woman, you know in the medieval time when they say she's strange she practices magic that kind of thing so she befriends this woman and this woman says you can pray to the gods in the day but you can't pray to the gods at night because the gods at night will twist your prayers or will twist your 
needs and they will make it into their own naturally the night of the wedding Adi LaRue panics and she runs and she's just trying to get away and she starts praying to the gods to please let something happen so that she doesn't have to marry this man and unfortunately she didn't notice the sun is already setting and as she prays the god of death pops up and he's like I will give you an ultimatum you can walk scot-free out of this wedding but the moment you walk out nobody will remember you and every time you meet someone and they turn around and you turn back to them they won't remember you and she's like yeah okay fair deal and everyone forgets her she's immortal everyone forgets her and it's just a chaotic kind of story up until i would say this era where she meets henry and and he's also cursed she doesn't know it he also doesn't know she's cursed you know it's a whole kind of thing he remembers her he's the only person who can remember her and they have this kind of love tangled happening i won't spoil anything that is basically just i think the first 100 pages of the book so it's basically focused on Addie larue and how she goes through life how everyone forgets her and the trauma she picked up you know that kind of stuff then the next book is verity by colleen hoover in this book we follow lo i can't remember her surname and she is a struggling writer she wants to make big bucks in writing but unfortunately she doesn't have that oomph where <laughs> publishers are like you look like you can give me money so i'm just going to write you a check right now take your book and then just publish it but then she is asked by one of the most famous authors in her area she's asked by the husband to co-write for this woman called verity and verity has a lot of books that she pu already published and unfortunately she was in a car accident which resulted in her not being able to complete her stories so they ask Lo to please you know, write the stories you will get compensation for it for completing the series and everything and what transpires is very creepy there are really hidden secrets in there that makes you think was the accident Verity actually was in an accident was it planned what was the nature of her relationship with her children because that is just weird her son is also weird and her husband i feel is keeping really dark secrets from us as a reader if you have read verity and you have read the bonus chapter that colleen hoover recently released i have questions upon questions about verity's husband i can't even remember his name there's a red flag waving <laughs> and the more i'm thinking of it the more i want to change my answer from team manuscript to team letter because mm, i don't know hey there was some strange things happening in that book the next book is the pact by sharon bolton and this follows a group of six teenagers and they are having the time of their life before they get shipped off to university where they will start their adult journey and where they will start living the lives that they have planned to live and then one night a day goes wrong and a day results in the killing of a woman and two of her children one of the friends in the group decides she's going to take the fall for it and go to jail for them but the catch is that she wants payment for when she comes back out of prison it was supposed to be a short sentence and one of her friend's father kind of twisted the jury's arm and she ended up being in prison for about 20 years and now 20 years later she's back and she wants revenge and um, the ending I did not expect the person who you think is guilty is definitely not guilty it is it is a wild ride there are friends turning on each other there is obviously secrets involved it's a murder mystery it's it's crazy and i loved it the next book is gleam by raven kennedy and this is the third book i believe in the plate of prisoner series and in the series we follow a golden touch girl named Orin, and she is essentially a slave to king midas but she doesn't know she is and King Midas' sole plan is to take over all the kingdoms in the realm. There were seven, but the seventh one dissipated. And essentially, Orin, you know, she's madly in love with King Midas because he just manipulates her in such a lovely way that she just thinks, this is the man for me. This is the man that loves me. So King Midas then goes to Fifth Kingdom, where he's planning on taking over. And a whole entourage sets off to take Orin to Fifth Kingdom unfortunately along the way they are intercepted they are hijacked by the red pirates red raiders i can't remember what it was but they are intercepted she's kidnapped and she's held for ransom up until where fourth kingdom's monarch comes and he's like 
I want her for more ransom than you want her. And what transpires is a series where Aura learns to believe in herself. She learns how she's manipulated by King Midas. And it's just, it's an amazing series that I adore. If you're looking for kind of like a Court of Thorns and Roses series feel, I would definitely suggest picking up these books. The next book is a debut novel by a Turkish author called Eski Yücebaş. And this book follows Melody, I think her name is, and she sets off to go to this college where she meets a group of people who dabble in dark magic. Of course she doesn't know this and of course she doesn't know that she herself has magic in her as well and what transpires is just an amazing book with dark magic, it's got autumnal vibes, it is just an amazing read and I can't wait for the second book to come out. I know I'm not selling it a lot but just trust me it is a it's very nice book to read. The next book is Jane Doe by Victoria Helen Stone and this I read on a whim on Kindle Unlimited because I didn't know what else to read and I was in the mood for kind of like a murder mystery feel and we follow our girl named Jane and she is impersonating a girl that is very a girl that says yes and amen to everything a man says and does you know like she's timid and she says okay if you tell me I won't wear this lipstick and I won't wear this lipstick kind of thing and her sole purpose is to take revenge on one of the men at the place that she's working at because he was the result of her best friend killing herself because he was so manipulative and you know all that jazz so it's essentially a revenge story and it was so good and it leaves you so satisfied and i would definitely recommend this book if you are looking for a revenge kind of murder story the next book is earthbound by april and pike i won't say a lot about this book because i've rented and raved about it for a long time you sit on a throne of lies but essentially we follow Tavia Michaels who's 18 year old and she is the sole survivor of a plane crash and she doesn't know how it happened but what forensics found was that Tavia's seat where she sat there was nothing wrong with it like there was this because she sat at the window there was this whole thing where her piece of the plane was intact there was nothing wrong with it. After therapy, after everything, she starts to see these glowing triangles everywhere she goes. And she tells her therapist about this and her therapist is like, okay, it's quite strange. I don't see the triangles or anything, but you know, fine. And then what turns out to be more creepy is she starts seeing this ghost of a guy who is who keeps calling her and keeps telling her that you need to follow me. What's more creepy is that it happened at two o'clock at night and she's like, oh yeah, okay, I'm just gonna go out and ask him, why are you following me? I'm like, it's a young adult story, so they are stupid things that are happening in this book, but anyway. The only person she can talk to about this is her best friend, Benson, and she confides in him and he tells her that this is really weird, he wants to go to the police, but she convinces him to believe her and they leave the area where they stay in to investigate where this ghost of a guy wants her to go and upon this investigation she discovers that what her guardians have told her is not true and she has power in her that can control some of the elements in the world. The second last book is Haunted by Kelly Armstrong. In this book we follow a dead black witch called Eve Levine and she is roaming the other underworld and she's trying to get in contact with her daughter, the one that she left out on earth. But unfortunately because of things happening that she can't just naturally go to her daughter and talk to her daughter. Then one day the fates come to her and they're like you promised us payment for saving one of your friend's life. We need you for that payback and she is asked to stop one of the underworld's most feared villains she is essentially asked to do something that not even the angels can succeed and if she succeeds there is a prize for her but unfortunately the prize is not actually what she wanted she has to choose between her daughter and locking up this demon and earning what she is owed. The last book is of course another Sarah J Maas book and it's House of Earth and Blood. I really enjoyed this book merely because there were so many plot twists and turns in this book that it left my mouth hanging open for quite some time. In this book we follow Bryce Quinlan and she is party girl by night and she works her legs off by day. One day when she goes to party she comes back and her best friend and her whole pack is killed. Cold-blooded murder, everything. After her friend's murder they arrest someone who was essentially behind like mass killings in the city 
But two years later, while this man is still in prison, the killings start up again. And then she's teamed up with an angel slash detective to find out who the real culprit is. And like I said before, the plot twists was amazing. I really, really enjoyed the book. So those are my top 12 books for the first half of 2022. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you've read any of these books, please comment down below what you thought of them, if you enjoyed them, if you did not enjoy them, and I'll see you guys in the video next week. Bye!